We've spent a lot of time about federal gun control laws for prohibited people under 18 U.S.C. 922 G. Specifically, we've done so because of the U.S. Supreme Court's decision pending in the United States versus Rahimi case. But we've also talked about how it's possible that Merrick Garland's anti-gun strategy and the Biden administration's anti-gun strategy may be failing because of the range case. Now, we still haven't heard any news on range, but is that a bad sign? We're going to talk all about this and some super geeky Supreme Court information when we get right back. Hey folks, I'm Mark Smith, host of the Four Box of Dine, a proud American gun owner, constitutional attorney, member of the U.S. Supreme Court Bar, and author of Disarmed, what the Ukraine war teaches Americans about the right to bear arms. All right, folks, so here's the story. You all know, we've talked about this before, the U.S. Supreme Court is trying to decide what is a prohibited person under federal gun control law, 18 U.S.C. 922G. There's a whole list of prohibited people. 922G1 deals with felons uh, in possession of firearms. Uh, 922G3 deals with drugs and guns. 922G8 is the Rahimi case dealing with domestic violence restraining orders in a civil context and whether or not that's a basis for disarming people while that restraining order is in effect. We've talked a lot about this. Now, I've also pointed out that the key touchstone is going to be, I suspect, physically violent dangerous, specifically if you are a physically violent danger to yourself or to others. The Supreme Court says if that is found after due process, uh, then I suspect they're going to say they can disarm you during that period of time while you are dangerous. And if you cease to be dangerous, you can get your gun rights back is my guess of what the court's going to say. Now, with that said, the U.S. Supreme Court has already heard oral argument in early November in the United States versus Rahimi case, which, as you know, deals with Zaki Rahimi, a pretty odious character based on the court records, a guy who uh, shot guns at people, never actually hit anybody, strangely enough, but he shot guns at people, shot guns into the air, threatened people, and also uh, was violently, uh, physically violent toward his girlfriend, uh, and so on and so on. So not a good character, uh, which is why Merrick Garland pushed the Rahimi case to the front of the line, as opposed to, let's say, Brian Range, where Brian Range is basically Jean Valjean, a guy uh, who, you know, decades ago uh, basically engaged in a nonviolent act of uh, lying to the government in a welfare application and has never been violent, never served a day in prison. But nevertheless, technically speaking, that was a felony under 18 U.S.C. 922 G1 and lost his gun rights for life. But then he got him back because he won a huge case, Range versus Merrick Garland, in the Third Circuit Court of Appeals. And the Department of Justice is seeking cert in the Range case. Now, with that said, I pointed out to you that even though Merrick Garland pushed the Rahimi case to the front because Mr. Rahimi's an odious character and they thought this is the best strategy to try to destroy the Bruin methodology, which has been very good for the Second Amendment, and to also destroy the Second Amendment, uh, that is Merrick Garland's intent. That's why they pushed the Rahimi case with bad facts, with the notion that bad facts make bad law. That's why they, they specifically pushed the Rahimi case to the front of the line and slow walked uh, like the Range case, which deals with a clearly nonviolent person that should never have lost his gun rights in the first place. So what is going on right now? Now, a couple weeks ago, I pointed out that the Range case, which came up at oral argument, remember, during the oral argument in Rahimi, Justice Amy Coney Barrett specifically mentioned the pending Range case to the Solicitor General's office. So it's pretty clear the U.S. Supreme Court is very well aware that there are other cases coming down the pike involving 18 U.S.C. 922G, prohibited people, not just this Rahimi case. And the fact that the Supreme Court is aware of these other cases is really, really, really good news for the Second Amendment community. The reason why that's such good news is that we don't want the Supreme Court to make a mistake um, without looking down the chessboard and to say something that could come back and bite the Second Amendment community on the butt in the Rahimi case because they bend over backwards to try to hurt Rahimi, who is a allegedly bad dude. So again, I'm not saying that's how it should go down, but you can see a situation where Mr. Rahimi is not very sympathetic and you can see a judge decide that they don't, you know, they want to bend over backwards to make sure he never sees the light of day. I'm not saying that's right or wrong or that will occur, but obviously you always want to be sensitive to the fact that judges are people too. But the good news is, that whatever that Rahimi decision says from the U.S. Supreme Court, the court is specifically aware of the range case, which means that when they write the Rahimi opinion, they are going to have in the back of their minds this range case. Now, there's another twist that I just want to bring to your attention because I mentioned to you about a week or two ago that the range case was going to be conferenced. Again, the Rahimi case was argued in early November. The range case was going to be conferenced from, by the U.S. Supreme Court just before Thanksgiving. Now, what it means for a case to be conferenced is simply this, that the justices all sit down in a room together and nobody else is in the room. And then after that occurs, 
they vote whether or not to hear a case, specifically to grant cert or not to a case. It takes four justices, four justices to grant cert. If four justices want to hear a case, they grant cert. They vote that way, it grants cert automatically, and then they hear the case. Now, my idea was that it would be much better, in my view, if the Supreme Court took the range case this term. But given the amount of time that has come and gone, one would think that the odds are that the Supreme Court has made a decision not to hear the range case this term, i.e. the term of 2023 through June of 2024. And that's still quite possible because the time period in which they would relist uh, the case <clears throat> or grant cert has kind of in the normal course come and gone. Doesn't mean they can't do it yet. It just seems like they've that the relevant normal time period uh, has come and gone. At least that's what I was thinking, but I went back and took another look to see if there was something I missed. And I think I actually did miss something that could be very favorable to us. Specifically, I took a look at the petition for cert in the range case submitted by the United States Department of Justice, the Solicitor General's office. And here's what's interesting. On page 26 of the cert petition by Merrick Garland and the Department of Justice, this is what they write, quote, The Fifth Circuit has stated that its interpretation of the Second Amendment in Rahimi accords with the Third Circuit's decision in this case. They cite to United States versus Daniels. Oh, United States versus Daniels. Why is that interesting? Because United States versus Daniels deals with 18 U.S.C. 922 G3. In other words, another aspect of of 922G, specifically G3, which says that anyone who is an unlawful user of or is addicted to any controlled substance may not possess a firearm. The reason why this is important is that the Solicitor General, in their brief, arguing that the court should grant cert in the range case, but not this term, they said. They want to hold it for Rahimi. They specifically reference Daniels. Now, why is this relevant to us today? Well, because the Daniels case is scheduled to be heard in conference on January 5th. Oh, did you hear what I just said? January 5th, 2024, the United States versus Daniels case is up to be conferenced at the request of the United States Department of Justice, which means as we sit here right now, the Rahimi case dealing with 18 U.S.C. 922 G8 domestic violence restraining orders has been argued in early November. But now we have two pending cases dealing with 18 U.S.C. 922G prohibited people. The range case, which is 922G1, felons in possession of firearms. And the Daniels case, 922G3, dealing with people, again, who are unlawful users of, of, of drugs or who are addicted to any controlled substance. They may not have guns under that federal gun control statute. And the Daniels case was specifically referenced in the Solicitor General's brief to the U.S. Supreme Court in the range case, which means the Solicitor General's office is tying together the range case and the Daniels case. And the reason why that's important is the Daniels case is not scheduled to be conferenced by the U.S. Supreme Court, i.e. not to be determined whether or not the Supreme Court will hear the case this term, until January 5th, 2024, in the several weeks from now. So in light of that, I actually think there is a possibility here. I don't have inside information. There's no way for me to know. I don't work for the Supreme Court. No one's leaking stuff to me, okay? But the point is that it's quite possible that the U.S. Supreme Court has decided to decide whether or not to hear the range case this term in conjunction with the Daniels case, which they're going to conference on January 5th, which means the fact that we have not heard information one way or the other on range, in the normal course, I would consider to be not a good fact for the Second Amendment community. But given the fact that I just realized by on page 26, the Solicitor General and Merrick Garland has tied the Daniels case together with the range case, and the Daniels case is going to be conferenced by the Supreme Court on January 5th, and now tells me that there's a very good likelihood that the Supreme Court has not done anything with the range case because they want to consider it on January 5th, in conjunction with the Daniels case, in some kind of combination there. Now, do I know this is exactly what's going on inside the Supreme Court? No, I don't know. It may be the case that the Supreme Court has decided to decide the Rahimi case, and then after they decide the Rahimi case, they will send back the Daniels case 
and or the range case to the lower courts to further consideration in light of the standards they set forth in the Rahimi case this term, uh, that would be known as a GVR, which means you grant cert, vacate the lower court order, and remand it for further proceedings consistent with, in this, situa in this situation, the Rahimi decision when it's written and comes out several months from now. That's quite possible that's still going to occur. But again, we just don't know. And by the way, as a side note, uh, the Daniels case is, is, again, the question presented in Daniels is, is under 18 U.S.C. 922 G3, uh, does that violate the Second Amendment uh, because it deals with the possession of firearms by a person who is an unlawful user or addicted to a controlled substance? And does this violate the Second Amendment? Uh, in the Daniels case specifically, uh, police uh, st in a traffic stop found a loaded firearm alongside marijuana in Mr. Daniels' car, and he was, uh, I believe he was indicted. Uh, there was an appeal up to the U.S. Court of Appeals for the Fifth Circuit out of Louisiana, Texas, and the Fifth Circuit found that 922 G3 was unconstitutional as applied, as, applied, as applied to Daniels specifically, and they dismissed the indictment. I believe that's essentially what, 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 what happened here. Uh, Merrick Garland has taken that cert petition up to the Supreme Court, which again will be heard on January 5th, I suspect, alongside range, but only time will tell what happens and we'll see what happens. If we don't hear anything about these cases uh, in the next month or two, it's going to tell us all we need to know because in that situation, it will be the dog that did not bark in the night or silence speaks volumes, whichever metaphor you want to use, but basically the silence by the Supreme Court over the next month or six weeks in the range case and any silence in the Daniels case is going to tell us that what's going on here is the Supreme Court's going to decide Rahimi first and then we'll deal with range and or Daniels in some way, either by granting cert at that point and hearing one or both of those cases or sending them back down for further consideration or re-evaluation uh, in light of the Rahimi case. Uh, we don't know what the Supreme Court's thinking, but any of those things are quite possible. All right, folks, so I hope you learned a little bit something here today. Make sure you follow me on X at 4 box at diner and subscribe and share and like this video. Uh, share it with your friends. And again, uh, I hope you learned something, and we will see you again soon here at the 4 Boxes Diner. Order's up. Table 2A.